Hey guys, so I wanted to bring you another tutorial around AI intent. If you don't know, AI intent is the, let's call it a uh, node red plugin that is used to connect your automations to GPT. Now in it, I have two nodes that I want to go over the call intent node and the register intent node. Now these two nodes are special because they kind of act like the link in link out nodes. And if you're unaware of what those are, essentially it allows you to call an automation from a different part of your automation. So in node red, right, we have what we're considered or what they consider flows. So here's one page and it has a whole bunch of different, or here's one flow. And in this flow, we have a whole bunch of different automations or nodes that are linked together that can do things. And if I wanted to call, let's say an automation that was on a completely separate flow. So somewhere over here, then we would need a way to make that jump and the link in link out nodes will do that. These two nodes do the same exact thing. This call intent will call whatever registered node that it is that you want to call and no matter where it is. Now the call intent node can be paired very nicely with the other AI intent nodes that are for GPT specifically when the GPT related nodes make a call to GPT and it returns back information. That information can be fed directly into the call intent node, which can then dynamically call any of the registered nodes that kind of fits what GPT is asking for. So when to do that, right, the call intent node needs to be set to use payload.node name. It needs to be set there because then what it's going to do is that it's going to look for that property whenever GPT sends information back. And based off of that property, it's going to know which node to call. Now I quickly ran this so we can show a particular error that you may run into when dealing with this type of stuff. Now we have an automation here where we, once we click the inject node, it's going to say lock up the house for me. The system context basically says that, you know, you're a smart home assistant that you can control a house and then it makes the call to GPT. And then of course we have, we clean up the response. Now, when we made the call, it told me that, Hey, I'm sorry, I don't have the capability of locking doors or managing the security system. It gave me this response. I did not expect this response because if you look once we, this payload that we see here, is not going to help me? Nowhere in here do you see what I just mentioned here, payload.node name, like that node name does not exist. So that means that when this ran, we got this error message or this warning, payload is missing node name property. Now, if you have an older version of, let's say this particular system, it may say something else like function name or something to that effect. Um, it's basically saying the same thing. And it probably also means you need to update. Maybe I need to update. Let me update. Manage palette. Yeah, let me update. Here we can check. I have another debug here, number 48, and we can see what came out of this split. For payload, it had args, response. That's not what we wanted. It's supposed to look different. When GPT uses an actual function, it's going to look, this payload will look different. This can be a number of reasons why it didn't work. And usually it's not like the AI intent, it's mostly GPT, like GPT will do what it wants. So you have to be very specific and kind of finesse it. So I try to be as straightforward and simplistic as possible. And I try to narrow down what its job is. So that way it has less reasons to go wrong. So in my case, I simply excluded this particular arm, my homes, let's say arm, my home turn on the alarm for the house. Actually, I can just leave it as homes. doesn't matter. I have it excluded from open AI. If I look here and we go into the de debug in the tools, this is all the functions that GPT would have access to, to call in order to do work within your system. And right now we've sent the two. The first one is empty or dirty, which is to set the dishwasher. 
And then we have another one here called answering machine, which sends message to be stored in played. None of these have anything to do with arming and disarming a house. As a result, GPT didn't call any of those functions and it simply responded back in text, which isn't what we expected. We needed it to call something. So we can see here, just with all of this information, we're able to debug and figure out what we did wrong. So now I'm going to include this for here, click done. I'm going to deploy. Cool. And then now let's run it again and see what happens. Notice 47, 48, and 45. It ran. And what you can see here, so 47, this node is this one down here, 47. You can see what response we got. Payload, args, node name are my homes. So you can automatically see that this is looking different. When we look at the split and we see it's at 48, 148, we can see what came into the payload. And now it's exactly what we're expecting. So payload, we have args, it's registered intent is true. So we know that this came from a registered intent. This is the response that it gives now. The house is now locked up and the alarm is set. Have a great day. And this is the node that we want to call. And because this is set to payload.nodename, i.e. payload.nodename, if I were to take this and paste this here, notice payload.nodename, it was able to instantly jump to this particular node and output that information, which is at debug 45, which is here. And here's the payload. Are my homes, args, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Wanted to go over that really quick and help you with some of the common errors that I can see with this and how you can solve it. Hope this helps. All right, have a good night.